Welcome. Today, Dr. Laird will demonstrate use of an important assessment tool you can use to identify patients with dementia. The Cochrane Group has found it to be a valid tool, and we will share tips on how to perform it efficiently and effectively. Most clinicians find they can complete this assessment with a patient in about 10 minutes. It is time well spent. Let's listen as Dr. Laird introduces the assessment to her patient. Well, thanks for being here today. Well, it's my pleasure. I'm always glad to come. Well, that's good to hear. What we're going to do today is go ahead and do an assessment of your memory and thinking. Okay, so I, okay. <laughs> I, have, I appreciate your being willing to do it. Yeah. I have a series of questions. Uh, some are easy. Some are a little more difficult. Some you may say, what in the world? You know, Dr. Laird, what are you doing? What are you talking about? But, that's right. But just do your best. Um, if there's any instructions you don't understand, ask me. Be right. sure you've heard my instructions. And there's nothing that's really timed. You know, you don't have to work quickly unless I tell you to. So take your time. Make sure you understand. Okay? okay. All right. I think I do. Okay, good. Um, so the first question, what is the year right now? 2000 and... <laughs> Let me think. 16. Okay. There you go. And what is the season of the year? Um, like summer. All right. What's the date today? Oh, boy. I don't. I really don't know. All right. It's sometimes when you're retired, you don't necessarily. I don't keep... pay any attention. To, I don't know what day it is either. No but problem. I think it's Friday, but. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So day of the week, yeah. you're thinking Friday. Okay. Yeah. Of what month? Um. September. All right. Now, what state are we in? Florida. All right. How about the county? Um, Orange. All right. And what town are we in? Um, Orlando. And what kind of work do we do in this building? What kind of building is this? It's medical building. That's right. And what floor are we in? Or on? Level, I guess. First one. Okay. Excellent. All right. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to say three words. After I say the three words, I'm going to want you to repeat them back to me. Okay? Mm -hmm. So listen to me say all three words, and then I'll ask you to repeat them back. Okay? All right. Okay. Banana, sunrise, chair. Banana, sunrise, chair. Excellent. Now, later on in the assessment, I'm going to ask you those words. So I'm going to, okay. and I want you to try to remember those for me. Okay? I will try. Okay. Very good. It's all I can ask. Here you can see Dr. Laird is adding the patient's answers and scoring as she moves along. Notice she also put a small check mark after the reminder she gave the patient to remember the three words. Next, Dr. Laird will ask the patient to complete the serial sevens item. This item is used to assess simple arithmetic, but more importantly, it shows the ability of the mind to stay on track. A key to scoring has to do with how many times in a row the patient can complete the subtraction of seven. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is I'd like you to count backwards. I'm going to ask you to start from 100 and count backwards by seven. Oh, you had to do that. Well, 100, 93, um, 93, I, I have to think. Take your time. 80, 85, I'll give you that. Notice there are five points possible in this task. We are trying to see how many times the patient can stay on task and subtract seven backwards. For this patient, she correctly identified 93 and gets one point. Then she made a mistake and said 85, so she does not get a point for that. She then correctly remembers she is subtracting 7 and picks up from 85, and then counts backward 4 more times. She scores 4 out of 5 having lost 1 point for the early mistake. Technically speaking, you can stop counting points after the first 5 answers. Alright, excellent. Very good. All right, you can stop there. Oh, good. <laughs> what I want you to do me next is tell me those three words I asked you to remember earlier. You know, I'm not, I'm not faking this. I don't think I remember. A chair was one. Did you say apple? No. You always say apple. <laughs> I honestly don't remember the other two, and I'm not, I'm not fooling. I okay. Don't. 
What is this called? It's a pen. Right? And this? A watch. Okay. That's easy. Good. <laughs> Good. Now, I want you to repeat after me exactly what I say. No ifs, ands, or buts. No ifs, ands, or buts. Excellent. What I'm going to want you to do next is listen to some instructions I'm going to give you about something to do with this piece of paper. After I give you all the instructions, I'm going to ask you to do what I've said. Okay. I want you to take the paper from me with your left hand, mm -hmm. fold it in half, and return it to me with your right hand. Wait a minute. You don't want me to fold it with just my left hand, do you? You just want me to fold it. You can use both okay, hands to okay. fold it. That's okay. You, so I'm going to take it from you. I'm going to fold it this way. Thank you. Next, I'm going to show you... No tree? <laughs> Next, I'm going to show you something. I want you to read it to yourself and do what it says. Very good. You can open your eyes. Now, are you right-handed or left? I'm right. Okay. So go ahead and take my pen there. What do you want me to In do? this space right here, I'd like you to write a sentence for me. Any sentence you want. Mm. Can it be a short one? It can be short. For the sentence, you are looking for a subject and predicate, and you want it to make sense. <laughs> God is good. Help me. Well, yeah, we all need I'm to make. To him. I know. We all need that request every okay, now and again. Okay. So keep the pen. Look at this figure there. Oh, yeah. I want you to make a copy of that figure exactly as you see it over here. Okay. For the intersecting pentagons, you want to make sure there are two five sided figures. You also want to make sure that there is a cross in two areas similar to the figure shown. All right. No Picasso. That's, <laughs> that's okay. Few of us are. I'd rather be Michelangelo anyway. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, that is all I need on that piece of paper. Good. All right. So thank you very much. I appreciate you doing that test with Did me. Did I pass? You, you, you passed. Oh, good. You passed. Okay. High five. Let's discuss the validity of the MMSE. It was created based on an education level of eight years. Expect 85% of patients who truly do have dementia to be screened as positive, while 15% of those screening negative will end up having dementia. Among those who don't have dementia, 90% of the time they will be correctly identified. 10% of the time, a patient may do poorly on the MMSE and not have dementia. Keep in mind, your clinical judgment of the patient's baseline risk and degree of change is important in addition to screening tools. For those with higher education levels, higher cutoffs may be appropriate. Let's review the scoring of the MMSE. Scores of 24 and below are positive for possible dementia diagnosis. A full evaluation for cause is required based on a positive test. Scores of 25 and higher are less worrisome, perhaps, but please keep in mind that for people with relatively higher intellectual baselines, even normal MMSE scores can indicate a personal change that is, in fact, the earliest detectable stage of dementia. Here, the patient scored a 25 of 30 and could be a candidate for a complete diagnostic evaluation. From Dr. Laird's years of experience, here are some pearls to keep in mind as you use the MMSE in your practice setting. First, Dr. Laird calls it an assessment instead of a test. Years ago, patients told her they didn't like tests, so she stopped using that term. Next, try to keep things moving and stick to the script. Avoid the temptation to tell the correct answer or respond to your patient wanting to know the answers. Tell them you can talk after the assessment is over. Next, stay positive. If they get frustrated, it won't go well. Be encouraging, even if they are getting the wrong answers. Thank you for trying is a good thing to say. 
Everyone passes, no matter the score. And finally, speak slowly and clearly as you give instructions. Thank you for joining us today to learn about the MMSC assessment tool. We hope you'll feel more comfortable using this tool in your practice. If you'd like to see a full test given start to finish, we've also posted that on the ALZCNFL.org website. Thank you.